Well, my, my history with research begins, uh, it wasn't really a, um, uh, a plan that I had to follow through. It was more of a, an inner need, let's say, to gain more confidence as a professional in science. And confidence comes with knowledge, <laughs> and which in turn comes with um, uh, searching constantly for answers, which is practically what a researcher does. And that's how I began <laughs> my, my journey through research. Every step I took in my career, it was opening new doors, new opportunities, and I was weighing my options every time, depending on the needs I had at that stage in my life. So um, when I left uh, from a, um, when I left my home country for the first time to go to Spain, um, I was offered then uh, a scholarship to continue with PhD studies, but I was too homesick, so I decided to go back to, to Greece, my home country. The reverse happened when I left for my PhD studies uh, in the Netherlands. I was already working for years in, in Greece. I had a good job. I was actually offered um, another good position uh, and a promotion, but I had already decided I wanted to continue with research. Therefore, I left abroad because uh, the options there were much better than doing a PhD in Greece at the time. There are plenty of advantages uh, in being a mobile researcher. Um, well, just to start with, you get to know uh, all sorts of people from different cultures and different backgrounds. Uh, you advance as a researcher and as a scientist because you get to work in different laboratories, learn different techniques. Um, you have a more extroverted, you learn to have a more extroverted rather than introverted uh, view of one particular research topic exactly because each researcher brings a different mindset to it. One of the main advantages of being a mobile researcher is international recognition of your work um, because let's face it, researchers are not in this for the money. Being a mobile researcher is really a nomadic type of life. So you get to have all the excitement of moving around and traveling, but you get also sort of uprooting every time you, ha you have to do that. For me personally, it was hard every time that I had to leave my uh, home country and my family and my friends to go somewhere else because it was usually for long periods of time. O of course you do. Uh, make connections and you do meet new people wherever you go, but you don't have the time to actually um, perhaps bond as much or um, let's say create such ties as with your actual supporting network, which is usually back home. One main difficulty is, the, is managing pension at the end of a researcher's career, a mobile researcher's career, and that is because each country has its own pension schemes and its own laws and you have to find a way to combine all these different uh, experiences in the end to have a, a, a decent, let's say, pension. Each country has its own laws, um, and the degrees need to be validated by uh, local authorities. Uh, for example, if I go back to my home country, I need to validate my PhD degree that was obtained abroad, and for that it takes um, money, there is a, a substantial fee for it, and it takes time, so a few months, if I'm not mistaken, which means um, it's not only costly, but you might lose on uh, job opportunities in, in the meantime. You won't be able to apply for them if you don't have your degree validated. Of course, it's different in other countries, so in the Netherlands, that I, where I did obtain my PhD, this is not necessary. In Ireland, uh, um, as well, there are different laws, so it depends from country to country. Another thing that I'd like to see changing is um, uh, if the funding could be f for long-term periods, so a researcher could be more, uh, let's say, calmer uh, to actually plan his or her future, especially when there are, there's family involved. Uh, because you do have to, to think about the next position, the next project, go from one funding to another, which it can last one year, it can last three years, but usually not more than that. I would consider going back to industry at some point. Um, it's actually healthy uh, changing between the two fields, so ac academic research and industrial research, and that's the reason that a lot of funding proposals are based on collaborations between academia and industry. Uh, they both have a lot to offer, so yes, I would surely consider. On 
top of everything, it's a great honor to be selected as a Marie Curie Fellow. One of the great things I got to do as part of the Marie Curie Fellowship was to visit um, a, a renowned uh, research institute, the Max Planck Institute in Germany, um, which for me as an undergraduate uh, chemistry student was really just a dream. I never thought I would make it. Uh, ever working there, and I, I, this was made uh, possible through the Marie Curie Fellowship. Well, there are certainly some disadvantages uh, in the Marie Curie Fellowships. I'd, I have to say that the um, most difficult part was time management. They are, like I said, uh, highly prestigious projects, um, and therefore you have to be very resilient both physically and emotionally as a researcher to manage with multiple tasks, multiple traveling. Dissemination is a key element for Marie Curie uh, projects, therefore you have to uh, build a lot of collaborations and travel for that and work very long hours. So surely there are some difficulties as well. One change that I would like to see uh, is the follow-up after a, a Marie Curie uh, Fellowship. Um, when I was a Marie Curie Fellow in the FP6 program, um, there was a chance to apply for a reintegration grant um, as a, an ex-Marie Curie Fellow and go back to your home country and have a position there. Uh, now these grants have changed to career integration grants. It's no longer a prerequisite for Marie Curie Fellows, so any researcher could apply. But for having gone through, uh, let's say, Marie Curie Fellowship is no longer, let's say, an added value for this particular grant. So this, I would like to see changed.